I believe you can answer your own data analysis questions. Do you? You should. Stick around for another episode of Code Club. I'm your host, Pat Schloss, and it's my goal to help you grow in confidence to ask and answer questions about the world around us using data. Since starting this project, we have yet to really leave the command line interface. You've learned a lot of bash syntax, mkdir, cd, ls, pwd, touch, rm, rmdir, nano, git, make, sed, pipe, if, mv, and probably a few others. If you've got all those down, then you're in great shape and are likely seeing the value of using these bash commands to automate a reproducible workflow. But if these still seem a bit challenging to you, don't fret. We're going to spend a few more episodes in Bash to strengthen our familiarity with these commands and with my general workflow. In today's episode, we'll see many of those same commands and some new ones to help solve a problem I found in our analysis. In the last two episodes, we used special patterns called regular expressions with sed to extract information from our file names and paths. If you did the exercises in the sed episode, I showed you how you can run sed on the contents of a file rather than its name. But set isn't the only place that we can use regular expressions in Bash. There's another, probably more popular tool called grep, where we can use regular expressions. Heck, the name grep is short for globally search for a regular expression and print the matching lines. After the last episode, I was looking back through our files and noticed that Mother had changed our sequence names because the names had spaces in them. Have I mentioned how horrible spaces are for bioinformatics work? I also noticed that although most of our sequences start and end at the coordinates that we trim them to, there are a few for each region that don't. In those cases, Mother starts the sequence with a series of periods to indicate the missing data. Later on, we might decide to toss those sequences because they're weird. But for now, I prefer to have those periods be hyphens to represent gap characters. Instead of opening these files in a text editor and replacing all the spaces with underscores or replacing the periods with hyphens, we can fix the information using sed. Along the way, we'll learn a few extra commands to keep things interesting. These are the commands that I often use to diagnose problems or do simple analyses of data in my files. Even if you're only watching this video to learn more about bash commands and don't know what a 16S RNA gene sequence is, I'm sure you'll get a lot out of today's video. Please take the time to follow along on your own computer and attempt the exercises. Don't worry if you aren't sure how to solve the exercises, at the end of the video, I'll provide solutions. If you haven't been following along but would like to, welcome! Be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you know when the next episode is released. Feel free to leave a comment, even if it's just to say hello. Please check out the blog post that accompanies this video where you'll find instructions on catching up, reference notes, and links to supplemental material. The link to the blog post for today's video is below in the notes. Well, here I am in the root directory for our project. Again, I do ls, I see the directories we're used to, and if I uh, double check on our, our status for version control with git, we see we're on the master branch, everything's up to date, and we're good to go. So in my introductory remarks, I, I comment on two problems that um, we're gonna address in this episode of Code Club, but I wanna show you how I got there and how I found the problem to start out with. So my first question was, uh, how many sequences do we have in our data set? Now, uh, you might think, well, that seems like a very simple question. How would I even go about figuring that out, right? Um, perhaps you'd think, well, we could load it into R and we could we could kind of count the number of sequences that way. And if you think about it, that, that's actually not that trivial to do. Uh, and it turns out that there's a few very simple ways within Bash, it's simple once you know the commands and the syntax, uh, to figure out how many sequences there are in your data set. And that involves using a command called wc or using grep. So wc is short for, at least I like to think of it as being short for word count. So we could say wc data raw forward slash rndb, rndb underscore 16s fast a. What this output tells us is the number of lines in the file, the number of words in the file, and the number of characters in the file. Um, a word uh, being any text that's separated by a space. So uh, this would tell us, well, there's 160 or 1.625 million sequences in here. I don't think that's right, or 1.62 million lines. And so uh, what this occurs to me then is that a FASTA file can be formatted in one of two ways. So in the first way that I typically deal with them 
each sequence is represented by two lines. The first line is the header, which is denoted with a greater than sign like that. Um, and that tells you uh, the name of the sequence and perhaps other information about the sequence. And then the second line is the actual sequence data. But other people uh, have the same header and they represent the sequence as multiple lines with each line being maybe 80 or 100 characters wide. So I bet this one is the latter format. So how can we figure that out? Well, one option is to use the head function. So we can say head data raw rndb 5.6 16s fast a. And we see sure enough that um, each line, uh, you can kind of see it here. Uh, you can see how my, my line, my header row line kind of scrolls off um, beyond 80 characters. And here each character, uh, each row is 80 characters wide. Um, and so this tells me that each sequence is represented by many lines. Okay, so WC isn't gonna work, but don't forget about WC, we'll see it here again. Another option is to use grep, which again is short for something about something regular expressions and then printing the lines globally searching. I think of it as get regular expression, although I know that's not the, the actual uh, meaning of the name. That's what I think of it as. So what we could do would be to do grep and then in quotes, we put our pattern and then we give it the file name that we want to search for. So I'll say data raw um, rnd raw rndb uh, 16s.fasta and what we want for the pattern is something that maybe only occurs once for each sequence. And so if you look at this sequence, the first sequence in the data set, you'll note that the first character is a greater than sign. And so, as I mentioned, that is the definition of the header for FASTA. And so I will put grep greater than sign and then the name of the, uh, the file that I wanna search for this pattern for. And so what grep is going to do is re return every line that matches that greater than sign. And watch out, here comes a tidal wave of data to us. We can't possibly um, extract all that information uh, without some extra tools. And so one of those tools I just talked about, if I use that pipe character that we've learned in previous episodes, I can pipe this output that just was kind of vomited out to the screen to WC. And if I use hyphen L, or if I, if I leave it with WC, this tells me that there were 77,530 lines, uh, 374,000 words, and um, 7.6 million characters. So what I really want is only this 77530, and what we can do to get that is to add the dash L or hyphen L argument, and this tells us that there were 77,530 sequences in our data set. Now, another way we could do that is without the WC-L, but giving grep another argument. Another argument we could give grep is hyphen C, and the hyphen C tells grep to count the number of lines. Don't return the lines, but count the number of lines that match this character. And we see we get the same output using hyphen C versus uh, using WC-L. In my own use, I go back and forth between these two options. I'll frequently use the WCL more often because often I'll, I'll kind of be building out a pipeline where I'm stitching together different commands using the pipe. And, um, you know, I, I, if I want to know the number of things that match a hit or, yeah, hit a match or whatever, match a hit, uh, how many times that happens, then sometimes it's easier to, to only remove the WC-L um, and then continue on with the pipeline. Uh, if that makes sense, versus if I had dash C, then I have to draw all the way back over and delete the dash C uh, to have it output text that I'm then taking on to the next step of my pipeline. Again, both of them will give us the same result of the 77,530 sequences. That works for something like our uh, FASTA file where there's a defined structure. Again, every sequence has a header and every header starts with a greater than sign. That's very nice. Well. When we looked at our data uh, v19 uh, files, we recall that we uh, had this rndb bad acnos file. 
and if I give it ls-lth, it tells me that this has 1.4 KB file. This is a 1.4 KB file. I might want to know how many bad sequences were in there. Well, uh, I could do head rndb, uh, head, I have to get the path, right? Data v19, rndb, bad acnos. And it's a series of names of organisms. And that uh, isn't going to be very easy to search a common element of all of those uh, lines in my bad acnos file. Instead, what I can do, hopefully you're remembering this, is we could use the wc-l. So I could say wc-l, data v19, rndb.bad acnos. And I see there's 103 sequences that did not match um, that, that were bad sequences. And these were sequences, again, that did not span the full coordinate range of the V1 through V9 variable regions of the 16S gene. So again, uh, you can see that WC-L uh, is useful in other contexts outside of using grep. Looking at these names, um, I noticed, as I was doing this, a problem. And that the problem is that these are the genus names of my uh, sequences that were that didn't span the full length. I can use nano v19, and I can see that if I kind of scan down through here by hitting Control V, these are all genus level names. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I have many um, examples of all of these that I, I have species names that should be in those files as well. So this got me thinking that there there might be a problem with how the data are being stored in these FASTA files. Perhaps you're thinking, well, let's use nano and open up our FASTA file. So I could do nano data v19 rndb.align. And it immediately dawns on me that this is probably a really big file. <laughs> and uh, nano is really struggling to open up this file in memory. And so it kind of lags here for um, a bit of a time. And what you see is uh, that greater than sign, the genus name, and then the aligned sequences that follow. And it tells us that there's 153,148 lines. So this tells me that there's a problem. Um, but again, I, I think that that genus name uh, is not unique in those headers. So let's look at Let's try it using head instead. So we could do head data raw, and we'll go back and look at the raw data that we read in to see if that has any more header information uh, in our FASTA file. And we see that sure enough, uh, we looked at this earlier, that um, the sequence header has a lot more information. And actually, we need all this information so that we can link it back to other information that was in a metadata TSV file that we also downloaded from the RNDB. And what's, what's, what's happening is that there's a space in the um, organism name here. Uh, we also see a, a variety of other spaces here with uh, chromosome, uh, anonymous, and then over here before the plus or negative strand. To see how common a problem this is, what we could also do is we could grep for the first, for the header line of each of our sequences. And I'll go back to the raw uh, FASTA file. And again, it spits out all this, which we've already seen. I could add head to only see the first five examples. And um, you'll see uh, that's there. And I guess it's not five, it's 10, 10 rows is the default output from head. And we see all of these actually have a space in their names. So what I'd like to do is replace that space with an underscore so that everything stays together. The problem is that when this comes into mother and gets aligned, mother then is stripping out uh, everything after the space. And I believe mother's doing the right thing there. Um, and, and sure enough, we, if we look at the aligned file, yeah, it's removing that. And that the um, the name uh, is not supposed to have spaces in it in the FASTA header. At least it, it shouldn't. It causes problems. So what we'd like to do is remove that space in the organism name. And in fact, we want to remove all the spaces in the FASTA header for the sequences. And I'd like to go ahead and re return all those spaces into underscores so that we keep this header all the way through our analysis. We need to go ahead and file an issue on this to change our spaces to underscores in our 
um, FASTA file as we're aligning it. So with new issue, we'll say replace spaces with underscores in FASTA headers prior to initial alignment. Okay. So it's that first alignment where we're aligning our RNDB FASTA files against the silver reference alignment uh, where mother is removing everything after that first space. So we would like to modify. So I'd like to double check. Uh, I've got the right script here. So it's going to be an align sequences.sh. Modify code align sequences.sh to um, change the sequence header. to remove spaces. My general plan of attack, I think, is going to be use said um, to generate a um, temp.fastA file that has the uh, spaces removed, and then align star temp.fastA, and then rename star temp dot align to star dot align. And then we want to remove the star temp dot fast A. So um, again, we've got our RNDB, the fast A file. We're going to use said to change those spaces to underscores in the headers. The output we're going to send to a file ending in temp dot fast A. The temp indicates to us that it's a temporary file. That's the file we're going to align. I don't want to write back over the initial FASTA file because, again, I want to keep my raw data raw. Uh, that raw data had come to us from the RNDB. We will then align that, like I mentioned, and then we can rename the alignment output that will end in temp.align to align, and we can then get rid of our temporary files. I'll go ahead and submit this issue. This will be issue number 15. Over here in uh, my command line, I'll go ahead and create that issue. And so we'll do git branch issue 15, git checkout issue 15, run branch issue 15, and we're in good shape. So what I'm going to do over here then is I'm going to use uh, sed, and we will um, the s and then the, the three forward slashes where I'm going to look for a space and replace it with an underscore. That'll be good. And the input to this, what we could do is the less than sign and the name of the file, and then the greater than sign to what the new file is going to be, temp.fasta. So this is one way of doing it that you'll often see. But it turns out we don't actually need that less than sign. What we can do is we can say run said with this find and replace pattern on this file, and the output will go to um, this new file. I'm going to go ahead and copy this for now to test it in my bash script. Run that. Now I want to go ahead and do a grep uh, on that the sequence header to make sure it did what I had hoped it would do. Because I'm going to get a ton of output, I'm going to use head to double check the output. And so what I see is that, sure enough, I've got my underscore between my genus and species names. But you know what? I didn't get all the spaces. That reminds me that said will only replace the first case of the space. And if I want to place everything in that line, I need to put a G for global um, at the end of the search pattern before the closing quote. And now if I copy that and I run that at my interface, and I again do grep uh, with the head on the temp.fasta file, I see, sure enough, all my spaces have now been turned into underscores and we're in good shape. So this line works. And this is the, the file that I want to align. And we will also um, want to move uh, that to uh, something ending in a line without the temp. And we'll go ahead and remove uh, our 
temp.fasta file, and that should be temp.align. The output's gonna be temp.align. And we wanna remove temp.fasta. And again, we could do what we did last week, which was if um, dollar sign question mark uh, equals zero, then we want to do all this. Um, else, if I, uh, we'll say echo uh, fail mother uh, failed to align sequences. I'll do exit one and save that. I'll go ahead and get status on that. That's been modified. I'll get add, get commit dash M, and I will say um, uh, modify uh, sequence header to remove spaces. Closes number 15. I'll get checkout master. And I'll get merge issue 15. That looks good. Now, again, I'm on the master branch. I'm going to go ahead and run that to generate my align file. So I could do make data raw rndb that 16s align. And I'll make this. Stay tuned. Uh, hopefully, there won't be any problems. And when we come back uh, after I, I zoom through this, then we'll go ahead and make sure that we closed out the issue. And that worked pretty well on the v4 data. I'm going to run a summary seeks command from mother on these output files. So we'll do summer seeks parentheses fasta equals data v19 rndb dot align on that. And this will then output uh, the distribution of starting positions, ending positions uh, in the alignment space, and then the number of bases per sequence. Uh, ambiguous bases, we see that we have some sequences in here that have 70 ambiguous base calls in it. That's probably something we're going to want to remove down the road, but for now, I'll leave it. Um, this looks pretty good. All of our sequences start at position one and at 4136. You'll notice that this is longer than 1500 nucleotides, and that's because these are aligned sequences. And remember that they have gap characters in there to get the different evolutionary positions in the sequence to line up. I'll rerun this, but instead of v19, let me do v4. And what I see here is that not all the sequences start at position one. Uh, there's at least one that starts at position 10, and not all of them end at 645. Some of them end at 640. Now, mother outputs data from an alignment, and uh, the gaps are represented by hyphens, and missing data is represented by a period. Those periods for missing data come at the beginning and end of our sequences. So I'd like for those periods to actually be hyphens for some downstream analyses that we're going to do as part of this project. Well, which are the sequences that don't start at position one? Again, what we saw earlier was we could do grep uh, greater than sign to get the sequence name uh, data v4 uh, line. And again, I'll do head because I want to control the output that we see we get uh, those sequence names. But what if we don't want it to match that greater than sign? What if we want it to match our sequences? If I said like ATGC or something like that, well, there's a lot of ATs, Gs, and Cs in my header row, right? Well, there's a special option we can use with grep, which, which is hyphen lowercase v, and that means don't match the pattern. So return the lines that don't match that pattern. And again, running that through head, now what we get back are our sequences, which is pretty, pretty slick, right? We can add another grep to this. So if I again remove that head and I do grep, and then say I do uh, backslash period, because a period itself will match any character, the backslash is needed to indicate that we want to match the actual period character. We see that we get back some sequences here that start with a series of periods. Um, and it looks like we've got three of them, but we've already seen that we can count these, right? So we do, we have three sequences that have periods at the beginning of them. Uh, it doesn't seem that we have any at the end, uh, which is interesting. Uh, and so something that uh, this gets a bit convoluted, 
uh, that we have these two greps together in series. And while that certainly works, uh, there's an easier way. And again, if we're looking for sequences that start with a period, then we don't need to remove the headers because all of our headers start with a greater than sign. So we could do grep uh, backslash period, quote, and then data v4, rndb.align. Uh, ah, and what happens is I got back the headers, right? Um, and that's because the headers themselves contain periods, right? So it does exactly what I asked it to do. So I can focus it to say, remove or give me those sequences that start with a period. And so if I use uh, the caret, which is the character above your six on the keyboard, that will anchor the search to the beginning of the line. So this is saying at the beginning of the line, find those lines that contain a period. And sure enough, what we get back now are these same three sequences that all start with periods. So what we've seen in these last couple of examples is that we can use grep to return lines that don't match a pattern. We can define patterns that start at the beginning of a line. Uh, we can also chain grep commands together in series like we did in this example, right? Um, and it doesn't matter how you do it as long as you get the right answer. Um, that being said, the simpler example, the simpler way, uh, it's easier to maintain and understand oftentimes. But sometimes you start with a more complicated case and then figure out how you can simplify down the search pattern. Let's do grep backslash period dollar sign. So the dollar sign anchors the search to the end of the line. And then we'll do data v4 db dot align. And we get nothing back which is surprising to me uh, because when we ran summary seeks, there were a few sequences that looked that start that ended earlier than the others. So I wonder if instead of a uh, period, it actually ends in a gap character. And if I put in hyphen dollar sign, I actually get an error. And I think the problem is that grep thinks that hyphen dollar sign is an option that I'm trying to give it kind of like we gave it a uh, hyphen C well, it thinks I'm trying to give it hyphen dollar sign. So I can use the backslash escape character to say, no, I want you to actually match the hyphen. And again, what we get here um, is all the sequences that have that um, uh, the hyphen at the end of their header line because uh, that's indicating the negative strand of the search. So what we could do is we could again do grep and we could do hyphen V to remove those sequences that start, those lines, I'm sorry, uh, that start with the greater than sign. And we see that we've got uh, several sequences here that um, end with either one gap, I believe this one ends with uh, five gaps. Uh, we can see how many there are. And there's 10 sequences that end in a gap. So that's great. Now, what I'd like to do again is we're gonna create an issue that we're gonna resolve that turns the periods in our sequences into hyphens. I'm gonna create that new issue and we will convert the leading and lagging uh, periods in alignments into hyphens to represent gaps. Output from mother's commands is starting sequences with periods that when the sequence doesn't start at position one, would like to use hyphen to represent a gap instead. Again, looking back at my scripts, where do I want to do this? Well, I think I want to do it in my extract region and here in extract region, um, I'll say after filtering, I then want to, um, so what, which is this file? This is extract region. Put all the nice mark down in here. Uh, we will, um, uh, 
we will use said to convert period to hyphen in sequences um, that are outputted from mother commands. And I will do git branch issue 16, git checkout issue 16. We're on the branch. Everything's clean. We'll go ahead and go to um, our extract region shell script. And looking at our code that we have here, we see that the output of all of this ends at filter.seeks. And the file that we've got here uh, ends in filter.fasta. And that is the file that I'm going to operate on with sed. So I will do sed, uh, my, my find and replace, and I will then operate on that fasta file. And like we did earlier, I'll go ahead and output this to test.fasta, and hopefully that will all work. Um, and then I will change that to be test.fasta here to target. And we'll also want to get rid of that file uh, because we don't want to keep around our, um, our temp files. So uh, test.fasta, actually that's going to be moved to target. So we'll get rid of the filter.fasta. Now I want to double check that this works. Uh, I, I've got to put in the, the, the pattern and the replace. What we're going to do is we're going to look for those lines that start with a period and then repeat the period zero or more times. And we're going to repeat that with as many hyphens as needed to replace the string. If we save that, now we'll, we should test this for sure, right? Uh, so we'll go ahead and set on that for data. When we'll use the file that we've already generated, rndb.align. And let's output that to uh, test.fasta. And we can test that it worked by doing grep uh, minus V to get rid of the header line. And we can then do um, on the test.fasta and pipe that back to grep and look for anything that contains a period. Nothing matched, it worked. Very good. I'm gonna go ahead and run make um, data v4 rndb.align and we'll see if this works and I'll be back with you in a second. So it ran all the way through. Let's go ahead and look at our data v4 directory and we see that we've got those files um, and I want to double check by doing my grep and see if anything, um, maybe I'll just see if we can uh, find any lines that start with periods in data v4 or in db.align. Nothing matched, we're in great shape. Uh, again, um, we modified that. I'm gonna remove my uh, test.fasta file that's good. And I will go ahead and do um, git add code extract, git commit, replace leading periods with hyphens. Closes, and we're on issue 16, number 16. And we'll do git checkout, uh, issue 16. Oh, sorry. Ah, I'm already on there. Git checkout master. Git merge issue 16. And finally, I need to do a git push. And I'll check my issue out. And it's been closed. Now that I've closed the issue and pushed, um, pushed the issue and the changes back up to GitHub, I need to go ahead and build out those other RNDB files. I'll go ahead and do make data v4 um, line. And what I can do is I can put them all in a single line. Data v4.5, uh, data v3.4, and data v19. 
and it will now run through all these and um, I'll go ahead now and just well that's while that's running, I'll go ahead and describe to you all the exercises that I'd like you to work on uh, here during the break. For the first exercise, what I'd like you to figure out is how many sequences in our RNDB align file, the, the full length version, have ambiguous bases in them. Okay. Uh, the second is to determine how many of the full length sequences in that same file contain the standard forward primer to amplify the V3 region shown here, or the V4 region also shown here. As a bonus, see if you can figure out how to modify your regular expression to represent degenerate bases. Remember that you can use uh, that star uh, to, to repeat the previous character zero or more times, and that you might need to use the hyphen to represent and match a gap character. And the final exercise question, uh, the FASTA sequences that we looked at in the header uh, it contained four fields separated by pipe characters. What I'd like you to do is generate a file that contains the four fields separated by comma. So this would then be a, a CSV or comma separated values file. Be sure to remove the greater than sign from the header row. Uh, to stretch yourself a little bit, figure out if you can give the four fields names or column headings without using a text editor. Go ahead and work through those exercises, uh, pause the video, once you've gotten through them, go ahead and press the play button and I'll come back and show you how I work through them. As always, I hope you found those exercises engaging and helped you to stretch your brain muscles a little bit with the new material that I've covered in today's episode. Uh, I've written up the three exercises here and we'll work through these together. So again, how many of the sequences in uh, our RNDB align file have ambiguous bases in them. Well, we're going to use grep. So we'll do grep and I will, um, uh, I'll do that negative search uh, to remove the header lines and I'll remember to do data v19 rndb.align. So I'll only be looking at the actual sequences and we will then pipe that to another grep and I'll do hyphen cn. Um, another way of writing this would be to do grep n and then wc-l. Let's run both of these and see what we get. So that gives us 174 sequences. Uh, and this other one also gives us 174 sequences. Very good. Again, remember that, that what we're doing is we're doing the anti-search or looking for lines that don't match this character. Uh, from our RNDB align file. We're then running another grep to count the number of lines that match the N, either using the hyphen C within grep to count or with WC-L to match the number of lines that match. In this next exercise, we ask how many of the full length sequences in data V19 RNDB align, that same file, contain the standard forward primer to amplify the V3 and V4 regions. Very good. Well, it's gonna be very similar, so we'll do grep, and I'll go ahead and copy this sequence down in. And the file we're gonna search on is data v19 rndb.align. And that's not gonna map, right? That's nothing's gonna, if I, if I search for this, nothing's gonna come back. It's a little bit slow because the file's big, but it's not gonna match because that file is aligned. And so what we need to do is we need to insert the gap characters. Now, I don't know where the gap characters occur in our primer. So what I can do is put the hyphen star, and that means match the hyphen character zero or more times after a C. And so what I'll do is I will copy that over and over and over. Right. And I will then add WC-L to that to count the number of times that primer is found. And what we find is that it shows up 74,966 times in our sequences to remind us um, how many total sequences we had, data v19. Uh, it was about 75,000. What did I do wrong? And that's a surprise that nothing matches. <laughs> so I wanna double check what's going on here. So if I do head on my align file, 
there's a lot of output here. And what I'm noticing is that my greater than sign has a hyphen in front of it. That's not good. Um, so I think what it's doing is it's, I think it's matching this zero or more times and replacing it with a hyphen. And perhaps what I'd rather have it do is match that one or more time. And so if I want it to match one or more time, then I'm going to use the plus sign. Now, let me rerun that. So let me redo make data v19. Um, actually, before I do that, let me go ahead and uh, get checkout issue. Um, that issue 16. And um, let me do make data v19. And we'll let this run and see if that solves our problem. So that seems to have gone through. Let me go ahead and do a head on my data v19 rndb.align. And sure enough, that minus sign is gone now, so we're in good shape. Uh, while I'm, I'm in the middle of this exercise, I know, uh, let me do git status, uh, git add code extract region sh, git commit hyphen, um, remove hyphen from before um, greater than sign in header. Okay, git checkout master, Git merge issue 16. Actually, I'm not ready to merge it. What I'd like to do, I need to go back and modify that to indicate that this goes with issue 16. So I showed you how to do this before. Uh, git checkout issue 16. Git commit hyphen hyphen amend. And I will then say closes number 16. So it's okay if we have two issues that close 16. Again, I'll do git checkout master, git merge, issue 16. So all the typos are real, all the bugs are real. Uh, I didn't make this up. <laughs> uh, git merge issue 16, that's great. Git push that up. You'll see I added another commit that referenced this issue now, okay? Very good, so both of those commits are now tied to that issue. All right, where were we? All right. Back here with our, ish, our example. So we wanted to grep this and run it. This was our primer sequence that we were looking for. This should work now. And sure enough, we see that we've got the 74,966. And I think what we were trying to do was grep minus C uh, to count the number of sequences in RNDB. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that carrot to anchor it to the very beginning because that's how we found the bug in the first place. And see, so we see that we've got 76574. Uh, so that's a, a pretty good representation of the sequences that match that uh, V3 forward primer. And again, we use the coordinates because we know that primers aren't universal. Um, and that's one of the reasons we use those numerical coordinates. Now, the next primer sequence uh, is going to be fairly similar to that except we see that it has an M in it, and an M is a degenerate base. Uh, go ahead and kind of build out this padded primer uh, that's padded for the um, alignment. And uh, instead of an M, we can use a period, as I gave you kind of a, uh, a clue. And if we run that, we'll see whether or not we get more uh, matches, and we do. We get 75,700 matches uh, to the full length using that V4 primer. Now that was an M that we replaced with a period. What does the M actually represent? Well, uh, I always IUPAC, Google for IUPAC code, and you'll see it's purple, I've already been here, uh, that this tells you the code for the different degeneracies, and an M represents an A or a C. Um, that's good to know. And so that period, can represent a A or C, right? 
But we don't want to match an A and a C. We want to match an A or a C. And so what we can do is we can wrap that AC in square brackets. And what that says is in that position match either an A or a C. And we'll again run this. And we see that we, we matched one fewer sequences than we did using a period. Um, again, we didn't use primers to locate these regions. We used coordinates and, uh, and that works pretty well. So the final exercise indicates that the fastest sequence headers contain four fields separated by pipe characters. Can we generate a file that contains the four fields separated by commas? Be sure to remove the greater than sign. To stretch yourself, figure out how to give the four fields names without using a text editor. All right, so what I'll do is I'll do grep and then hyphen to get the header row from data v19 rndb.align. Uh, and, and we could use any of these files. This again is for exercise. So that's going to give us all of our, it's gonna give us all of our headers and I then want to replace those vertical bars with pipes. And so I'm gonna pipe this into said, and we will then do s forward slash um, vertical line forward slash. So we're gonna replace that pipe. Uh, I'm pausing because I don't remember if that pipe is a, a special character or not, but we'll replace that with a comma and then the closing forward slash. And I wanna replace all of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a G I'll do head uh, to test things out and see if we get ourselves into trouble. And we see that sure enough, it replaced them with commas, uh, but I still have that greater than sign. I'll go ahead and do said um, S and replace that greater than sign with nothing. And do head again, copy and paste that in. And you'll see that we now um, no longer have that greater than sign. And the stretch was to figure out how could we, um, how could we put in a header uh, for column names? And um, what I will do is I will say, we'll use the echo function. So we'll say echo, and then in quotes, I'll put um, organism name with an underscore, not a space. Uh, and then we will put in, um, I think this is like the GenBank accession, comma, no spaces. Um, and then the next one I think is the, maybe this is the genome accession. It doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to demonstrate how to add, how to, had, how to add the column names. And then we'll say the sequence accession. And then the fourth, Ah, I guess there's five. So the we'll say location and then coordinates. We'll say genome coordinates. We'll say chromosome here, right? Whatever we put in there, it doesn't really matter. It's, it turns out that there's five fields. Um, I'll probably go ahead and update that in the notes. Um, and what we can do is we can output this like we've been doing to our file. And so I'll call this my um, header table.csv. And so if I run echo on that, and then I do nano header table.csv, I see I've got those values, which is great. And I'd like to output all of this to header table.csv. Um, now, uh, if I run this, and I do head header table.csv, oh, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, we can see it here, right? Uh, we no longer have our column names. And that's because instead of a single greater than sign, if we put in two, the two greater than signs means append. So one means take the left of, stuff on the left of the greater than sign and put it into the file on the right. Two means to append it. If you only use one, it's going to write over everything that's in there. And if we run these two lines and then do nano header table.csv, we see sure enough, we've got our column headings as well as uh, the different columns, again, separated by commas. If you figured that out, you must've done a little bit of Googling. 
or had some prior knowledge. Good job. Uh, the key to that exercise, again though, was to figure out how to generate the five fields separated by commas. Thanks again for joining me for this week's episode of Code Club. Be sure that you spend time going through the exercises on your own to help reinforce your new skills using regular expressions. You'll find regular expressions are common in every programming language, and the syntax is pretty much the same. Once you get the hang of how to use them in one language, they're pretty easy to master in the others. It would be great if you could take the ideas we've worked with today and think about how they relate to your current projects. I'd love to see how you're adapting what I've covered in this and other Code Club episodes. Also, feel free to ask any questions you have in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them in a future Code Club. Be sure to tell your friends about Code Club and to like this video, subscribe to the Riffamonas channel, and click on the bell so you know when the next Code Club video drops. Keep practicing, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club. Thank you.